resume. Now, from verse 59 to verse 63, it is about the clans, the clans that could not uh, identify their genealogy. And this, as I mentioned, is important because uh, it involves identifying the people who can serve God, the priesthood. Verse 59. And these were the ones who came up from Tel Mela, Tel Hasha, Cherub, Adan, and Ima. But they could not identify their father's house or their genealogy. Okay, say wait into that. No. Okay, cannot identify their father's house nor all their genealogy. Now, the Jews, uh, they keep very strict records. And they can find it in the synagogue, or in the temple, you know, who is the son of who, who is the son of who, and so on. And they can trace to their tribes. But they can't. Because after their stay in, in Babylon, maybe the records have been lost. Whether they were of Israel, the sons of Dela Ayah, the sons of Toba Ayah, and the sons of Nikoda, 652. And of the sons of the priests, now this is important, priesthood, right? And of the sons of the priests, the sons of Haba Ayah, the sons of Kos, and the sons of Barzillai, who took the wife of the daughters of Barzillai, the Jiladite, and was called by their name. This saw their listing among those who were re registered by genealogy, but they were not found. So in the list, uh, they can't trace. They were ex therefore, they were excluded from the priesthood as defiled. Defiled with respect to serving as a priest. They are not qualified, not eligible to serve in the temple. Now, what does that tell us? What does that tell us? We are, we were saved. We are being saved. And we shall be saved. So you, 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 you must remain saved. You must know in whom you believe. You must know in whom you are committed. God will not forget you, but you, you can forget God. Yeah, I mean, they lost their records. Not that God forgot them, but they lost their records. So, for us, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Paul wrote to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. You know, Timothy, you know, Paul went through a very tough life as a servant of God. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. I know whom I have believed. Whom have you believed? Some people, you look at their, their, their lifestyle and their words, their action and their deeds, you can't tell them, can't tell the difference whether they are of the world or of God's. Very difficult. Then how to make you pastor? You understand? Right? How to make you cell leader? Because I can't, I can't tell the difference. They pop, you also pop. Okay? They swear, you also swear. How to make you but you say you come to church every Sunday. And then when we say fall in, oh uh, you fall in. Yeah. We say God uh, free food, oh come. But then we can't tell the difference. 
So, Paul said, I know who I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. What do you think Paul has committed to God, to Jesus? What do you think? His life. His hope. His trust. Am I right? You, you and I, we put everything in His hand. I know whatever He promised, uh, new heaven, new earth, eternal life, and I've just committed. I, I do what you have asked me to do and I know at the end, uh, it will be great. I know at the end, you will stand there and say, well done, good and faithful servant. I know who I believe because I've committed all this to Him. But, but there could come occasions for some people, some because as we have just read, they are excluded, you know what? Like Jesus went in, then they knock on the door, hey, Lord, 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 then I cast out demon, I pray for the sick, and so on. What did Jesus say? I don't know you. I don't know you. <laughs> wow, that would be very sad. That would be very sad. Hey, but my name is, huh, as... I don't know you. That would be sad. And you are excluded. Okay? So work your salvation with fear and trembling. Stay safe. You must cross the finishing line, you understand? You must overcome. Nobody runs the race huh? and the 19 mark I stop and say, My name is Pope, Lightning Pope. Yeah, and I got the gold medal. No, Hussein Pope has to cross the finishing line to get the gold right. Cross the finishing line. <coughs> so, they were excluded from the priesthood as default. So be sure. <coughs> Make sure you are sure. And the governor said to them that they should not eat of the most holy things till a priest could consult with the Uri and the Tumin. You remember the urine and the tumin? These are before the, the priest. And the priest will take these two stones. Until now, they still can't be exactly sure what and how it was done. But urine means light. And then tumin means perfection. And then they use these stones as to seek guidance or, or a word from God. And the outcome of these stones, however, I do not know how they do it, the outcome will, will tell them yes or no. So they were not quick to judge. They said, fine, we are not sure, but we will check it out. Meanwhile, don't eat any of the holy things. You follow me? So they wanted to determine God's will. Meanwhile, so there is no condemnation. Don't be quick to condemn you. You read. Romans 8 verse 10. Was it verse 1? Verse 1. Verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So, we may not be sure, but we will check it out. We are not condemning you. You understand? Okay? Okay. Romans 8 verse 1. <coughs> now, the last part of chapter 2, and I guess with this we will end today, because after this we still have a mission briefing. So from 64 to 70 is a summary statement to cover the rest. The whole assembly together was 42 1360. So you want to write on your paper somewhere. 42360. The whole assembly together was 42,360. 42360. Besides their male and female servants, of whom there were 7,337. So 
7337 7337 servants are male and female servants and they had 200 men and women singers so 200 you add them up what do you get you add them up what do you get now take out population <laughs> like tuition okay i'll give you an answer 49897 Four nine eight nine seven. This was the list of the people who came back in the first return. Out of the few millions who were in Babylon, and only about fifty thousand almost came back. So sad. The rest choose not to. Then verse sixty six. These are animal lovers. They are horses was 736 their mules 245 their camels 436 and their donkeys 6720 6, so God also was concerned for the animals they were listed here so some ask okay, so my pet puppy I sleep with the pet puppy every night go go on or go to town I don't know. Okay? Anything I know, I tell you. Anything I don't know, I don't want to guess. Some people like to speculate. Verse 68, Some of the heads of the father's houses, when they came to the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem, offered freely for the house of God to erect it in its place. So, leadership by example, the leaders gave. Verse 69, according to their ability, they gave to the treasury for the work 61,000 gold drachmas, 5,000 minas of silver, and 100 priestly garments. And I tell you, they were worth millions by today's value. And he gave. All for the house of the Lord to be built. So, the priests and the Levites, some of the people, the singers, the gatekeepers, and the netinim, dwell in their cities, and all Israel in their cities. And so, with this chapter 2, we learn that God tracks every name, He tracks every individual. Because before us, before him, brother, before him, is the Lamb's Book of Life. And our names are therein. So Lord, we thank you once again for your grace and for your mercy, for your faithfulness that you keep your promises. And even as you have brought these people back from exile into into Jerusalem again to reclaim their land. Lord, we want to say, even as Paul wrote to Timothy, we know whom we have believed and what we have committed to you, Lord. You will keep it until the day of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.